What is going on everybody? My name's Earl here. What I have here is something I'm not going to be fixing. This is actually going to be my new daily. And yes, on the title it says it's a 16 inch 2019. Now why the hell would you get an Intel MacBook in 2025? Well, I have one very big reason. And that is, I want to get rid of my razor blade because it's been lacking when it comes to the RAM. I maxed it out to 32 gigabytes. However, I'm unable to get up any further as it is a base razor blade. And sometimes I realize I also want a Mac experience. It has an i9 processor. It has 64 gigabytes of RAM and a terabyte of storage. I do wish I went for a uh, two terabyte SSD. However, I also was checking on the graphics and the two terabyte version had a lesser graphics compared to this one so this was the best of the best i could find and i mean for 700 dollars, it's really not that bad well look at that <laughs> i've already opened it the other way so i got this on newegg uh, i believe this is a refurbisher and right off the bat i got a weirdly fonted uh, off-brand 96 watt charger so hopefully i don't burn my house with this knock on wood we got usb-c I mean, these are just your usual aftermarket cheap alternatives to the original one, which is unfortunate. And you could already tell that it's not the real one because it's surprisingly way too light for my liking. So here comes the MacBook. This is going to be very interesting. This is my first, what, 16 inch MacBook Pro ever. Here is my new daily driver with a big scratch on that Apple logo. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a quite of a big gash right there. Not a big deal. This is going to be a mostly static desktop machine. So um, this feels weird, it's very texturized. I don't know if this is the real. I don't think this is real. You can see there's panel gaps right there. I don't think this is a real bottom plate looking at it. And also you can see how the rubber feet, they have mismatching um, indents in them, which is very interesting. Hopefully they replace the battery and I don't have to replace the battery. This is a refurbished, quote unquote, refurbished unit. But you know, sometimes they tend to just slap on some cheap aftermarket batteries and make as much profit as possible. So that could be one of the things here. Hinge seems pretty good. Yeah, not making any noises. Really nice. And this is, of course, the infamous touch bar that everybody hates or love. Personally, I love the touch bar. I never really had any issues with it. This one has the escape key, which is really handy compared to uh, the previous generation, which it was on the screen, which didn't make sense. Uh, this thing looks like it's completely dead, but oh man, that keyboard feels so much better than the butterfly keys right off the bat. And this is really dead because I can't even touch the dang trackpad right here. It wouldn't even click. So let's go ahead and plug in this Chinese aftermarket charger. Ugh. Now that's plugged in, does it start? Ooh, wow, that's got a good amount of bass on it, does it? Now I've never really had any experience with 16 inch Intel MacBooks. I only had a 15 inch 2019 MacBook, which was the last 15 inch MacBook they made. And then a few months later, they moved to this 16 inch right here. I got a pretty good deal with my 15 inch because this came out. I know for the most part, these machines are still very solid. This would probably sit between an M1 and a M1 Max or something performance wise, which is still isn't that bad. People are just glazing the M chips because I mean, obviously they are very power efficient. There's no doubt about that. And all that overheating shenanigans that these unfortunate MacBook Intels do a lot. I believe these have a much better thermal uh, capacity compared to the 15 inch models. I mean, it's definitely a lot thicker. Keyboard's way better. Uh, speaker sounds like they, are literally one of the best ones I've heard so far. So let's go ahead and set this thing up. Display looks amazing. Holy moly. Ooh, that is a good looking display. Well, it's definitely taking its time to load, but I'm also presuming that's because this is completely dead uh, battery wise. This MacBook must have sat here for a very, very long time because that is a completely depleted battery right there. Yeah, nobody wants to buy Intel MacBooks. Only stupid, dumb people do, right? <laughs> That's me. Doesn't seem like it has any issues with the backlight, which is good. I believe they fixed it later on uh, after 2018. Look at that. 
64 gigabytes of good old RAM right there. That's what I like. And we have an 8 core Intel i9 and this is running Sonoma 14.6. Well, we also have a terabyte of storage, which is lovely. I wish it had two because my razor blade has two terabytes. That's gonna be something I need to compromise in this, but that's fine. Let's check out the battery, shall we? 263 cycle count. Well, you know, considering this is a pain in the butt to take off battery wise. I believe the reseller probably just didn't bother doing that. Probably just ended up really just replacing the back plate, which I presume had a lot of scratches. For the most part, the thing is, the purpose of this MacBook is this is going to be replacing my desktop laptop. So I don't really think I need to replace the battery for now but we'll have to see if it's really dirty underneath. Okay, I think that's gonna do it. And oh yes, this is what I was looking for. Oh wow, oh, oh, oh. wait, hang on a minute. Look at that, 5600M graphics. Okay, so little bit of context. I was looking for a 5500M graphics, which had the GDDR6 memory because I could not find a 5600M for a reasonable price. I guess nobody paid attention at this refurbishment. They sent me a 5600M graphics. I'm not complaining. Eight gigabytes of RAM with HBM2, which is which means high bandwidth memory. We have top of the top MacBook right here. And the 5600M just means that this MacBook was produced around 2020. That was the time when they offered this upgrade, which I believe was around $600, which was one of the most expensive upgrades you can do for your MacBook at the time graphics wise. So we're going to go ahead and connect this to the internet. Um, get it charged first because it's completely dead and I'm gonna install a couple of things here to check out the battery the SSD health just to double check how this is okay I'm gonna go ahead and plug in this hard drive let's do coconut battery I'm gonna bet this has about 80% I was very close <laughs> I was very close but that is definitely ready for replacement I mean the replacement isn't gonna cost me too much but 79.2% normally it would be 87 90 milliamps of full power and we only have 69 so this is probably not gonna last as long as I thought it would be but I mean you know that's to be expected but at least we know that this battery definitely needs to be replaced let's also open up this application that shows the condition of the SSD because this is very important. If this has a terrible SSD uh, condition wise, I'm gonna have to return it because I'm not trying to risk anything. And would you look at that? You have 99% left, well, lifetime left indicator and overall 100%. Error logs right here, we got nothing. That means we don't really have to worry about the SSD for now because as you guys know, good old Apple, the SSD on this is soldered on and the only way to replace the SSD is by replacing that whole logic board. Yeah, that's what we're gonna have to deal with from here on out. This SSD only has a 59% life left. But you know, the good news about this 2017 is that I can easily replace the SSD. This is a user replaceable SSD. Yeah, most of that probably went into SSD swapping because this only has eight gigabytes of memory. And so it really depends on each MacBooks, the way they're being used. What is going on? Holy everybody? moly. Here. What I have here is a that is inch MacBook Pro. Wow. And you okay. It. The base is pretty good. <laughs> it's a really good set of speakers right there. Okay, we're going to go ahead and drop these two ISO files right here, which consist of Windows 10 and Windows 11. We're going to go ahead and install Windows on it by running Bootcamp. And this is really one of the shining points for these older uh, MacBooks with Intel. One thing's for sure, this keyboard is a thousand times more natural feeling to type compared to my dang butterfly keys. Windows, here we go. Yes. <laughs> ah, that was actually surprisingly quick than I expected it to be. And let's just wait until. Okay, we're gonna install bootcamp drivers. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and move this computer to where my razor blade is. I do have to install a lot of my programs and all the editing software I have, uh, but luckily enough, that's on my hard drive, which is located right here. So 
I'm going to clean up my desk, clean it up a bit to the point where I'm able to really just have a one-to-one -one session with this uh, 2019 MacBook Pro right here. Now, as much as I keep crap talking about this razor blade, I've had this razor blade for practically about five, six years now, and it's been an absolute trooper. It's been with me everywhere throughout the world, and I'm never going to complain that this was a terrible laptop. Special thanks to Asper-X for sending me this 20,000 milliamp 65 watt power bank. This thing can charge up to three devices. Yes, three devices. It has 20,000 milliamps, so that's gonna last you for a good while. And the coolest part about this is that it has two USB-Cs and one USB-A. And it's small enough that you can carry it in your pocket. And the best part about this power bank is that it has an LED display that shows you how many wattage you're taking from the battery. And it feels pretty solid. I've spilled coffee twice on this computer thinking it would be dead. And the best part about this computer, it is user upgradable right here. And you can see I don't have any batteries because if you guys don't know about Razors, they had a quite a bit of a history when it comes to their batteries uh, expanding. Therefore, for me to really have this as a desktop, I decided to take off the battery and just forget about it. I mean, battery life on this thing was absolutely terrible anyway. Here comes the new editing machine. And let's see if this little hub that I got would actually work. Let's put it right here. See if that charges. Look at that. It charges. Perfect. Here is the final setup of my desk. As you can see, as minimal as possible on the desk are from all the screws and miscellaneous stuff on it right now. Now you can see that USB hub really being used. I still have a couple of ports left because I have on top of that hub, I have a hub underneath that connects about three USB uh, removable drives. And so, you know, that's something that I'm really glad that I got on top of this USB-C hub or else there would be a lot more cable than what you would be seeing right now here. Now, obviously the goal would be to have one cable at all, but I don't think I mind the two cables. It just makes things less complicated, but you can see, I mean, it looks pretty good so far. Right off the bat, everybody wants to see the performance of this computer. So we're gonna do exactly just that. We're gonna go ahead and play Minecraft on this computer using this 144 Hertz panel right here. Because this is a 3440 by 1440 panel, as you can see, look how small that display is. We need to change the um, GUI scale here to three so we can actually see something. Now, one thing I notice about this computer is that if you go ahead and go to full screen, look at that. Oh, it fixed itself. It was glitching out last night while I was playing around with it. All right, create a new world. I'm going to show you guys that that 5600M graphics is not too bad, not too shabby when it comes to gaming. You also have to keep in mind this is running high resolution display, which is 3072 by 1920 on top of the 3440 by 1440. You can see it's not too bad. I feel like this is running around like 60 frames per second, which is really good. Now let's go ahead and check out the settings right here. These are all just stock settings. I did not change anything. I didn't take off anything. Here's what it is. And I dedicated about 46 gigabytes of memory. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's a lot of RAM. You can see it's very, very playable. Yeah, now you can already see how smooth this is compared to my razor blade and the fan isn't as high as you expect it to be. And this is half quality. Let's go ahead and put it to full. And you can see it's really not that bad. And then this is the 4K footage right here from my Mavic Air 3. A little bit of hiccups at first. Let's just wait it out. Now this is without proxies. Yeah, it might be struggling on the 4K when you put it to full quality. One thing's for sure, 10-bit footage, 1080 is still, it's so much better right here. Now we're, we're gonna go ahead and do some color editing here. S-Log3 converter, and you can see right off the bat, it's still very usable. Let's put it to full. It's still very smooth. I can move around. Now while rendering, you can see we're hovering around about five gigabytes of dedicated GPU 
memory with all the effects and so uh, this is good because that means this is actually working and then obviously the memory we're barely hitting anything because we're not really getting over into the three minute four minute range of timeline and so we don't really have any much more than probably 15 gigabytes total of memory usage on this computer uh, and then for the cpu you can see all the eight cores is being utilized which is fantastic but one thing's for sure this is definitely a lot faster than what I had before. I had a 1060 Max Q, which maxed out at six gigabytes of GDDR5. This has eight, which is a much more welcoming experience. You can hear that fan spinning, but trust me, it's not really that loud compared to, well, it's a lot more low pitch compared to the razor blade I had. Now, as ironic as it sounds, this is the ultimate Intel MacBook Pro. This is really the ideal MacBook Pro back when it first came out in 2016. But for some reason, Apple decided, oh, we need to make this thing as thin as possible to really ruin all the thermal dynamics, all the keyboard issues, all the thinness issues with the previous gen. A couple of years earlier on with their cable uh, issues on the display. Luckily enough, I believe 2018, they fixed that issue. So that's no longer the case for this 2019. Touch bar wise, I love the touch bar. I never really have any issues with it. The only time I had issues with it was when I was running bootcamp on my previous MacBook. And once in a while, it would just shut off by itself and all that issues but for for the meantime right now it seems like it's working perfectly fine but that's also because i haven't updated anything on windows <laughs> to boot up mac os just click the thumbnail right here for boot camp on the bottom right and go to the control panel and all i have to do is just target the disk and restart now to conclude this video the 16 inch 2019 macbook is definitely worth it for certain users such as myself i need mac os I need Windows on the same device. Now you could run Windows on the M chips, but you'd be sharing resources at the same time because you're gonna be using a software called Parallels. And it's just not the same experience when it comes to running Windows on it. Yes, you could argue that it's still a very smooth experience. It's still a very capable experience. It's not the same as running natively Windows on an Intel machine. I can't really fault Apple for not continuing the relationship with Intel. I mean, at that time, Intel uh, was just really not doing too good. They were running way too hot. They had 14 nanometer processes. And in my personal opinion, it wasn't the best year for them, especially the time when Apple wanted something very thin, very light with their chassis, which did not end well for them, even at the end. Granted, this specific 16 inch MacBook Pro for me is still a very viable solution. I maxed it out to the brim to with 64 gigabytes of RAM and an unexpectedly upgraded 5600M graphics and an i9 processor. So that alone is, you know, for 600 bucks, 700 bucks, that's plenty for a Windows computer for a Mac OS computer. So that alone is very much worth it for me. I mean, it's not slow. It's not the fastest thing in the world and it can definitely be beaten by a basic M2 chip or a M3 or whatever. But at the end of the day, the personal opinion is yours. Personally, for me, these Intel MacBooks are still worth it. And this is the pinnacle of it because you can get as much process performance as you can while not spending too much money. I mean, I only spent about $700 on this. It can be used as a Windows machine. It can be used as a Mac OS machine for free without having to pay a year of subscription for parallel. You might also argue, why don't you just get an iMac? Well, the iMac really gets rid of my real estate space right here. And I don't really have any space. This is only what, a 50 inch desk? So it's a very tight space I have here and I cannot have that, unfortunately. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. This is my experience with my new 2019, well, new to me, 2019 MacBook Pro. See you guys later. Peace out.